Good afternoon once again, Terrier Nation. I'm Sports Information Director Jared Plate here for the Hiram College Network and our third of our four-part series with our fall previews brings in head coach Dan Zemanski of the men's soccer team. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Good to be here, Jared. Let's start off, let's talk a little bit about the season. You guys are coming off back-to-back six-win seasons, looking to get back to the conference tournament for the first time since 2012. A um, lot of veterans coming back into the fold. I think you guys have 19 veterans coming back, seven freshmen. Um, talk about what all that returning experience is going to do for you guys, and um, what do you need from those veterans to kind of step things forward into the future? Okay, um, with the returning lettermen, um, they've been here, they've been through the program, so uh, they know they know what to expect come come conference time especially there shouldn't be any cultural shock it, it, it's a much more hyped up elevated uh, stakes are a little bit higher so uh, hopefully with previous experience we're able to transition a little better than we have in, in a couple of years past and as you said make that you know that conference tournament one of those prized four positions um, having said that with a, a lot of the returners uh, we don't have a whole lot of playing experience we do have probably Maybe five or six of those returners have gotten significant playing time, um, and the others uh, were hoping that uh, with the more time that, that they have earned, that, that they're going to produce for us as well. Probably the most experienced position that you have returning would be your, your midfielders. You guys are going to kind of control both sides of the ball. Uh, that's where you decided to name all three of your captains this year as well. If you talk about seniors, uh, Josh Lubich and Richard Milford, as well as sophomore John Vierig. Correct. Uh, talk about what those three guys are going to bring to the table for you this year and, and how does having that kind of experience in that transition game in the middle, uh, what's that going to do for you guys moving forward? Um, oddly enough, last year, three seniors, three senior starters, all in the midfield, all three captains. Um, and the three guys coming back, even the freshmen, a lot of playing experience. Um, I think the we could say the torch has safely been passed. Um, from the three prior to this year. Uh, they all have lots of game experience, both at the college level and at the club level. Um, composed on the ball, composed off the field as well, which I hope translates to some of our freshmen coming in um, in those situations. Uh, very, I mean, that position especially, uh, my background in midfielder, it's kind of, it's the hub. Uh, we, you know, you link the defenders with the forwards, you link the outside with the middle with the outside. So you have the best view of the game, you are within you know, immediate reach of everybody. Um, so I, I think it's very important to have you know, good leaders um, as well as good communicators at, at that, in that particular position. One of the things you also need on, on, on any soccer pitch is, is depth at certain positions. Uh, you got a couple other guys that will probably see time in the midfield. Talk a little bit about what uh, uh, Blake Easterling is going to bring in as sure. well as freshman Bryce Harding. Um, with Blake, Blake's been here a couple years. He always he always he plays with fire. He plays with passion. Um, sometimes he wears those emotions on his sleeve, uh, but much preferred to have that type of player than um, someone that is more you know lethargic and passive so I think again I think he's grown through his experience here and hopefully he's able to channel some of that energy even in a more positive output um, both with production on the field and with that uh, you know with that even though again not a captain a leader with some of the younger guys Bryce being a freshman coming in uh, a pleasant surprise uh, not that we recruited him because he's a good player didn't know he was quite as advanced as he's shown here um, in this preseason. And I think Bryce is ready to come in and, and give us, again, what I would say, some significant minutes. I know he wants to, I know he sees himself as fighting for a starting spot. And, you know, by all means, that opportunity is there at some point down the road as long as he, he keeps growing and, and showing the consistency that he has. Let's move to the, the front of the pitch and talk about the attacking forwards. Sure. Uh, you got Four guys up there, uh, a lot of, again, seniors mm -hmm. up top. Uh, you talk about Quinn Galecki, Keanu Shelton, Christian Shimmy Ramey, uh, and uh, also sophomore Austin Blatt. Now, Blatt um, came in last year as a freshman, led your team in scoring chances as well as goal, or he was second in goals. I think he scored a pair 
Shelton also scored a pair for you last year. So talk about what those guys are going to bring to the table and what do you expect out of your attacking forwards? Um, very similar to, I mean, to the midfield and, and any of the veterans coming back. It's just, again, the playing experience, knowing what, what, how we want to play. Um, they're a little bit, hopefully now, ahead of the curve. And they can teach the, uh, the younger guys that um, will be coming, you know, that are coming up. Uh, just show them the right way, lead by example. I think all four of them, um, we're hoping again. I, I, I think I can speak for them as well that you know they want to fill the back of the, the net more so than they have in years past. And I will say, with those four and the addition of two or three other players, Tajay Davis, um, Justin Parkins, um, Giovanni uh, Meza coming in, I feel probably as confident or not more confident than I have in four years that we have. That's a position of power for us now. I think we can cause opponents um, problems both on the offensive end and with the pressure that they can put on the other team's defense, even off the ball, is going to create some chances that maybe over the last couple of years that, that we've lacked. So, I, again, I'm hoping that uh, not only creating opportunities but finishing them, uh, we're, going to, we're going to be doing that in abundance this year. Uh, Moving on the other side of the field, when you talk about the defense, um, I know you've got Keegan Williams and Brian Corbin are both back, and you also get a little bit of a pleasant surprise coming into the season as uh, Kyle Watson joins the team once again after a couple of year hiatus of when he, he just playing baseball. But he was, fans might not remember, but he was an all Ohio defender coming into to college, and he did play a lot of games as a freshman. So talk about what those three guys are going to bring in, and, and how do you expect to? kind of help control the ball on the defensive side? Um, the back four, you know, question mark coming in this year. Even, uh, again, Keegan and Brian, both players that, that got some time last year uh, and some starts. But as a back four, total new unit. Um, Kyle, much like you said, welcome. Uh, surprise, re-addition to the team. Um, he adds, and Keegan adds, some maturity, some steadiness. Um, some organizational skills, trying to keep things simple back there. Um, Brian is uh, a player that um, has blossomed over the last year, year and a half. We're expecting some big things from him, both on the offense and defensive side. I think he adds an element uh, with his service and his pace and, and stamina that uh, you know I, I think he can. We can generate some attack from that left side as well. Helping out your defense, obviously, um, kind of a new face. In between the pipes, he played a little bit last year, but we'll get a more of a starting role this year as, as sophomore C.J. Keith. I know in some limited minutes, he did some really good things for you last year. He pitched a shutout against uh, Penn State Beaver in a 3 nothing win and didn't allow a goal in about 145 minutes for you last year. Uh, talk about what he's done so far in camp, what you like about his game, and, and what he's going to do for you this year. Um, C.J., just go back to last year, um, in the time that he was given, um, I think you mentioned, I don't know that he did give up a goal. Um, and he definitely, you know, he has earned an opportunity here um, through the previous goalkeeper's departure that, you know, he's the man to step up and, and to win that position. And uh, I think this preseason, he's getting himself back into the swing of things. And being the number one keeper, there be, there's a little more pressure on you, obviously, to step up. And I think he is more than capable of handling that role. Um, I think he's feeling more comfortable uh, both as a goalkeeper and the goalkeeper skill is necessary to not you know to stop the ball but also those things outside of, of just shot blocking which is leading your team defense and kind of reading and communicating with your back four and your back six to really put out fires before they even start so one final question for you it's kind of sure. a two-parter um, Open on Friday against Albion College, and then uh, what, what's a goal for that game that you guys kind of need to do to get off to a fast start? And also, uh, what are what's one thing that you guys might need to do to kind of get up over that hump here in, in 2017 and, and start competing for that back to that conference tournament? I'm um, like to obviously we'd like to start with a shutout. I mean, uh, uh, going right through the gates. I think uh, you know. I think in. In, in the years past, just that that consistency and starting off the gate with building good habits um, and then being able to, you know, being able to f find goals, 
whether that's rebounds, two yards from the goal, six yards from the goal, 18 yards from the goal. Not every goal we score has to be a Galazzo. And what I mean by that is that spectacular goal. And sometimes in years past, the last few years, I think sometimes we've been just a little too searching for just what I would call a, you know, every goal doesn't have to be beautiful. They all count as they all count the same as one. And I think here we've got a gritty bunch that uh, that realizes that. And you know, there's plenty of opportunities for restarts. Like I said, rebounds, just mixing it up in the dirt and finding that, you know, finding that, that stray ball and putting it in the back that, again, those opportunistic moments we have to be better at and be able to score those type of goals as well as the 25-yard upper 90 shot. Very good. All right. Thanks, Coach. Sure. That was head coach Dan Zemanski. He's going to walk out while, while we're doing this, but uh, you can uh, catch – the men's soccer team, I don't know why that just happened. Uh, you can catch the men's soccer team on Friday night against Albion College. That's a 4 o'clock start. Uh, you can also catch them on Sunday as they take on Westminster, and that will be a 7.45, both of those, the Hiram College Classic. You can also catch them on the Hiram College Network. Also, make sure to follow Hiram Athletics on YouTube. Subscribe for us. You can also like us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I am Sports Information Director Jared Blake. That was head coach Dan Zemanski, and until next time, go Terriers.